the biggest motivation is your own thoughts. So think big and motivate yourself to win. Good afternoon and welcome to Entertainment TV Live on Metro Television. We are live on DSTV Channel 277, live on Facebook and YouTube Metro TV Ghana. Follow us on Instagram, Metro TV underscore GH. And welcome to Entertainment Review. It's total entertainment and interesting conversation for the next one hour. So do stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We have lots of things coming your way. And the conversation is going to be very, very interesting. My name is Nanaya Tanwa Boache, and I'm doing this with Desmond Okre Kudanso. Aka that's the style boy fade. Uh, of course, of course, I of course. I like that part. I don't know which, which one is it. That's the style boy fade. Yeah, 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 I know, it's love good. that one. But hey, good afternoon, welcome to the show. It's another day. As you yeah. said, we've got exciting stuff coming up in the next one hour. I know on Tuesdays we um, focus on the gospel music industry, but today's conversation may be a little bit, you know, uh, just outside. Um, the gospel music industry. But of course, as you mentioned, we're live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana, so you can watch us live on there. And DSTV Channel 277, we're getting into our conversation where we're going to talk about understanding the elements of uh, music, and we're focusing on vocals today. We've got some great vocalists in the studio today. We are moving on straight into our conversation this afternoon um, as we engage our guests here in the studio. And let me just begin with this lady, um, Ladies First, has to say. So she is Nigerian, um, doing some great stuff when it comes to the gospel music industry. And she is Petra Odubayo. I got it right? Uh, a little. What's it? It's Petra Odubayo. 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 <laughs> Odubayo. So she is a gospel musician. And yeah. she's got some works out and she'll be joining our conversation this afternoon. And also to my far right, ladies and gentlemen, a gentleman, um, a great man, I've known him for a while, Michael Apreku, also known as TMC. So who's we'll a testing mic check? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're welcome to the show. Have Good you. to have you. Yeah, yeah. And our final guest, he is um, he's a music director, he's a vocal coach, and just as you saw um, one of the uh, videos that we played to you, Tim Eternity, he is the MD of the group, and yeah, he's doing some great, great stuff. A great vocalist also. He he seldom sings, but when he does, like it's, it's super. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Naya Pare is also here with us. Naya, good afternoon. Good afternoon, this one. Hope you're well. I'm trying. <laughs> you're trying. <laughs> the the pressure you. is getting worse. Wessa. So I'm trying. The pressure is getting worse. <laughs> oh. I don't even want you to, to say this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Anyway, you can join us on Facebook uh, with your comments. Yeah, today we'll be reading out some of the messages. Yeah. We've got like lots of time to talk. So we basically want to understand the importance of vocals. Having good vocals as a musician, what it means. And these guests that we have in the studio have worked with a lot of musicians, um, both gospel secular. Um, they, 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 they live vocals. And uh, before we just start, let me just show you something brief about Naya Parry and what he does in the studio, and the reason why he's here for us to talk about vocals. Watch this video. Um, so sorry about that. Um, so that was Niall Parry and his team there in the studio working out some stuff. Niall, 
How important is it for you to... Wh- wh- where am I starting? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just want to understand what, because anybody that hears that, I mean, I've been playing that for a while in, in the newsroom, and um, they love it. How important is it for you to have such an outcome for a song that you want to put out? So, basically, your vocals mix the song. When you have bad vocals in a song, you don't expect your song to travel. So... Most of the songs that are out there, that are good songs, you, you enjoy them, are because of the vocals in the song. When you have bad vocals in a song, I guess you're, even, you're, even if you're not musically inclined, you, you, you just, just don't enjoy the song. So it's very important to have a premium programming on how you want your songs to be by being intentional on every sound you produce in a song. That is what is going to make the song exceptional. Every song can sound the same. Everybody can do a particular song. But what makes one stand out? Because of how they make... uh, The the one that stands out shows that there has been a lot of exceptional work on that particular project. That's how come it's sounding different. So... Uh, individual A, B, C can do a song, but B can be nice, C cannot be nice, A can be nice because of the work involved in the song. So it's very important to deliberately work on the vocals before you bring it out. Just don't, just don't do anything because people will not enjoy it. Now, everybody likes nice things. Yeah. <laughs> so as vocals, if your vocals are not nice, people will not listen. MC, what, what is good vocals to you? Open your ear and see us. Okay, so um, I think what I would want to add to what Naya has already said is the fact that vocals are elements of sound. So, um, in as much as when you hear a particular sound and it's disturbing, you can tell that this sound is disturbing. You can tell that this is noise. You can tell that this one sounds good. That one sounds good. That's the function of vocals. So they are responsible for adding colors to the elements in the music. So, for example, if I'm singing and my voice is not in tune with the key that is in the song, immediately you hear it, you can tell that there's a discord. Even to a lay person who doesn't really know much about music can tell that ah, something is off somewhere. It tells you how important vocals are and how you need to take care of it. Yes, um, so it's very important. They add colors to music. And every vocals um, have um, um, a, the kind of color that it adds to a song. You, especially if you get to the Western culture, you realize that their tones are a little bit different from when you, when you get to the, uh, the black industry. So every vocal or all voices have a, a particular color that it kind of like demonstrates. So it's actually very important that you take your vocals very seriously. Yes. Let me just begin with you know how long you've been doing this thing and vocally, how do you rate yourself? <laughs> okay, we are sorry. Okay, um, how long have I been doing? Yeah. This? Okay, I've been doing this professionally for five years okay. since 2017, but I've always known I've had a good voice from childhood. So yeah. Yeah, in, in Ghana or Nigeria? Oh, in Nigeria. But no, no, I started doing music in Ghana, actually. Okay. Yeah, I gave my life to Christ in Ghana um, at Spirit Life Revival Ministries. So ever since then, I've been in music. Yeah, but you still don't want to uh, rate yourself vocally? Mm. Blow your own horn, though. I should blow my horn. No, so. it. Okay, I'll, say, I'll give myself a 70. Just a because seven I over feel 10. like they're. Yeah, a 7 over 10. Okay. Just because I feel like there are certain key things that I'm still working on that I need to perfect, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Now, now I want us to talk about the industry. Yeah. Now, your rating of vocals... That's vocal, why I like, <laughs> that's why I like it. The industry, your ratings <laughs> of the vocals that we have, we hear on our, on our TV sets, on radio, the songs that are coming out, are, we, are they putting out good vocals? Now, now in TMC. TMC. <laughs> Don't look at now. <laughs> hey. Oh, feel free. To- wow. Okay. Yeah. So I think so far so good. I think um, they are getting better. 
there has been this kind of understanding in music as compared to before. Yeah, earlier, people used to have this perception that the anointing is, I mean, if you have the anointing, that's it. I mean, what's, what's with the voice? Yeah. yeah. But it looks like now people are actually beginning to buy into what vocal excellence is all about. So for, for some time now, the music that is coming out is actually impressive. Yeah, I think uh, people are beginning to understand so many things when it comes to music. So that's what I can say now. But my income pressure, <laughs> pressure with them up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? say? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that because I think now, even if you do a studio work, you'll be you'll be invited to do live. Yeah. And if you are not working on your vocals, that is when you know if you are good or you are not good. So everybody is trying their best to even... I have a couple of artists who are not even gospel musicians who are running vocal lessons with, with me because they want to perfect their craft. You, you, know, see, you can be gifted with the, with, the, with the voice. You can be talented. But when you don't work on it, you just mess it up. So people are being intentional about their talents now. Because live performance will just bring you out. So you have to. And our, our musicians are, are doing so well. They are doing so well. Yeah. And about how does an artist know which kind of vocals is good for me? Is it a work of the music directors or as an artist? You have to also know for yourself. How, how, how do they know? So there are some artists. Um, you, can be an, you, you can just be there. You are just singing. And some, a producer can see you and tell you that, you know what, I think you have the gift. Maybe okay. you might not even know you have it. Yeah. So the producer will take you, okay. teach you, okay. maybe teach you what to sing and that. And maybe your song blows. Yeah. But because you didn't know, now you have to also learn the craft. Yeah. Now take vocal lessons, now know the key I sing in, now know how I'm going to sing to make my, my voice get better. And that's, how, that's what I realized in the industry. Mm -hmm. And lots of people were picked. Yeah. So now they have to learn. Okay. So you hear that, oh, this person is good, but his live performance is not good. Yeah. Because he doesn't have training. Yeah. There are lots of musicians you can go to studio, what kid do you sing? They don't even know. True. But when you give them, they will flow nicely. So you have to, to learn. Yeah. So it is the directors and the music producers who are yes. supposed to help mm. them yes. and aid them. But I, yes. is that, I love the fact that you said that some were handpicked. I mean, some, those who were born yeah. uh, with it is natural. But if you were not born with it, you can actually work on it and yes. improve on it. Yes. Are these artists improving on it? Some are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can speak for everybody. Some, yes. some people are. Okay. Some people choose not some to. Are. I mean, some okay. are. Yeah. Which, I know you, you've been working on some albums, some singles for some artists. I, I don't want you to mention the other, those who are not. <laughs> no. Let's do those who are. Those when you're in the studio with them, oh, you see that they... But let's segment. Are they in the gospel fraternity or they're in the oh, circular? Both. 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 Okay. Okay. Both. Okay. So which artists have you worked with that you... You were like, yo, this person understands. This person is singing really well. Pesiata. Pesiata. Good. Pesiata. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He, he knows his, his craft. You see, I, I thought I was the only like person. He doesn't come to the you, studio. Yeah. He, he knows what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he's open for suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. Is it because, because you've worked with him before? Uh, yeah. But I've worked with some people too that <laughs> when they come. I'm going to DJ Bobby, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Can promise. Okay. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think Can Promise has a very powerful vocal. Mm -hmm. But I think because of management and the way they want his music to go, to go. he doesn't do a lot of okay, okay. sweet singing, but yeah. he has a very yeah. sweet voice. Sweet, sweet mm. voice. That's but Ghana, if he sings sweet, like nobody will buy yeah. it. We'll, we'll get to that conversation. <laughs> we can go to the female too. We can yes, go females. To the females. Yes. Because we have. In Ghana here, one of the female category that is really prestigious is female vocalist. Vocalist of the year. Of the year. Yeah. And we know if Fia has taken five. Four, she she won it continuously. We all came in. And, and, yes, others, Adina. You know, yeah. See, that's that's a very prestigious category for the female. So I think we will come there. That's what that's oh, oh, me, I just want yeah. to know. I just want to know. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, they do so many different things. And some of them really understand music know the competition. 
some of them might be in that. Some of them we've had in years in the category. Sometimes a bit of a question mark. Some believe they are newbies, and we just put them there because it takes time to know how to do these things. But so, if they are a good vocalist, you're a good vocalist. Good. So for them, for the females, they are different. Yeah, good. Or you disagree? I, 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 I would. Okay. I don't know what he meant by that, so I, I mean, I might need him to explain. But okay. I mean, there are people who don't have nice voice, okay. but they understand range, they understand technique, mm -hmm. and they do very good in music. Okay. They don't okay. have a nice voice. You yes. can tell that this this person's voice is nicer than and this person's yeah. voice once you hear it. Yeah. But you'd rather want to listen to this mm -hmm. person because he's got great riffs, great runs, yeah. great range. You know, he yeah. can hit certain places. Yeah. And whilst the one with the nicer voice mm -hmm. is not doing anything, it's just singing in a straight line and you're not, you just enjoy the other person's thinking. Mm. So, okay. I mean, you might not have a nice voice, mm -hmm. but you can build on it and... Wow, you know. so I like, she's bringing technicalities in it too. Mm. The pitching, the range, the rhythms and those things. Can you, <laughs> see why I'm laughing, can you differentiate the difference between a good voice and a great voice, apart from the pitching and those Oh, things. yes, you can. So how do we differentiate the good one and the great one? I think we were all born or created with... Uh, how, I don't know the word they usually use for this, but sound is something that... Mm -hmm. I, I think he mentioned it earlier. One sound could sound disturbing, mm -hmm. one could sound like noise, one mm -hmm. could sound like sweet mm -hmm. or nice. Yeah. So I think we can just differentiate as humans okay. that... This is a great voice. Mm -hmm. This is a not so good voice. Mm -hmm. This is a good voice. I mean, okay. Yeah, okay. I think so it's, it's, I want to bring TMC in and with respect to the good vocals. I see that a lot of the young people, you know, Sister Bedu came yeah. here. Um, we've spoken to a lot of them. And they started singing as backups to a lot of the gospel musicians. Yeah, true. And uh, Dinah Hamilton, the other time I was at Century Video, um, Zap Mallet. <laughs> Dinah was back and forth, Francis AJ. Yeah. So you hear Dinah sing now, and you know that, yeah, she, she she's understands. gone through she's a lot. Gone, she's yeah. gone through the. Is it's that true. helping, TMC? Is that helping a lot of yourself and your mates who, are, who have backed a lot of you know, uh, mainstream artists before and have learned from there, and you are now trying to do your thing also? Okay, uh, it helps. But then uh, sometimes you can get to the bridge where if you want to come out as an upcoming artist or if you want to uh, create your own niche as an artist, it becomes mm -hmm. a little bit confusing. Because here's the case that you've gotten different music ideas from different places. Um, I've worked with Kidi. I've worked with um, Sinaso. Mm -hmm. Both of them have different music altogether. They all have different sounds that they create. Yeah. So as a, as a background vocalist, if you are to... BV for Kitty is going to be different from when you're BV for Sinaso. Mm -hmm. If you are to BV for, uh, if you bring it into the gospel industry, if you are to BV for, uh, let's say, uh, Ohima Messi. Let me bring in Empress Gifty. Or yeah, Empress Gifty. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Uh, Empress Gifty, or uh, I mean, any other gospel artist that you can you can make mention of. You realize that they all have different kind of, uh, let me put it this way, music genre mm -hmm. that okay. they portray, and your responsibility as a background vocal is the ability to align and make sure that you are fitting in that music genre. Mm -hmm. So now here's the case that when we come to, um, let's say, R&B gospel, you can mm -hmm. get. When we come to soul music, you can do it. When we come to contemporary, you are there. So now it is your turn to come out as an up, uh, upcoming artist and mm -hmm. you're confused as to which of them you can yes. choose. Personally, I, I have that problem because I, <laughs> I can see that... Ah, I can do this. I can do that. So now I, I can't really tell exactly what my field is. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you would believe it or not. I'm still, I'm still trying to find out where I fit. Hey, I don't uh, believe yes. it. <laughs> I'm still trying to find out where I fit in because I, f I feel like I'm still not satisfied. Mm -hmm. When I hit here, I feel like, nah, this is not it. Like, it is this one rather. It's that one rather. So it helps. It gives you broad. Uh, it, it makes you competent. You know, you begin to understand so many technique. You, 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 your, your vocals actually improve mm -hmm. because there are times that you have to sing in a particular tone. There are times that you have to switch from your vocal texture. I call it the 
vocal tone layering. And, I, have, and myself and my viewers will appreciate if there can be some practicals oh. because you are talking <clears throat> vocal. Yeah, you, you, you are, you are <laughs> vocal, the, you are vocal the, people. Yeah. Yeah. So you you are giving <laughs> theories, theories, or one of the practicals. I asked you beforehand if there was going to be practical. <laughs> oh, oh, they call me. I can see it on the microphone. It's not a performance, yeah. Uh, I will try because mm. uh, hey, TMC. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've lost my voice a little bit. Hey, honestly, no, 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 no for real. Okay. Okay. I'm on a serious vocal break. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten lines. <laughs> you do something for us, of course. So you were making a point. Yes. So um, you are exposed to all these type of uh, vocal technique. Okay. So at the end of the day, it helps you um, as a singer, and you can trace it to all the great artists you can see from Tasha Cobbs to Kara Shed, to Dana Hamilton, to, I mean, all the artists that you made mention of, you realize that mo all of them were learning from somewhere before they came. So when you're a background vocalist, it actually helps you. And it doesn't make you lazy, you know, because okay. every time you're on your toes, you're supposed to learn something new. You're supposed to sound, if you are back in Tibet, it's a different ball game altogether. And if you're back in, um, let's say, um, Kari Job, mm. it's a different ball game altogether. So it actually really helps. Okay, yes. I mean, this draws me to, um, I'll come to Petra, but Naya, you have worked with um, some of the international musicians that, I mean, we've adored since your childhood. Um, what's, the, what you, what's the experience with them? What do you pick from them vocal-wise that you think that Ghanaian RT should be adding to their craft so that we can improve our vocals? I think vocal rest. Okay. And hmm. when they, they know when to actually... Push it all. Shout. Yeah, and <laughs> went to actually, okay, the, the program is in two weeks' time mm -hmm. or it's in a week time. So mm -hmm. they don't, they don't, we don't give all out. And the problem with, with the, let's say with the gospel as, as side, let's say the program is in Tuesday, uh, it's, on, it's on the weekend. That is when we intensify our rehearsals. The rehearsal, okay. And that is when we are having a lot of all night rehearsals. That's when we are having a lot of prayer sessions. When it should have been hmm. done like weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time the program the program is Sunday, we have all night rehearsal. We have prayer all night prayers on Friday. Mm -hmm. Saturday we are having dress rehearsal. Sunday, your your body is your instrument. By Sunday you are tired, and the one thing about the voice is as soon as you are tired, the voice is you you can't work any magic. Yeah, you can't take any uh, 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 vocal. <laughs> Supplement to open. It's, it's, <laughs> your body is tired. Uh, yeah. So that's the problem we have. We we push all our rehearsals and prayer sessions weeks to the event. One mm -hmm. we could have prepared like weeks ahead of time. time. Yeah. So that yeah. maybe that week are just resting. They are just getting ready for the program. So by the program we don't have a lot of vo good vocals coming out. And during the programs they are going off. They are flattening. They are missing arrangement everything but i think with the foreigners they know their crafts yeah they can't prepare they don't blast where's our cramp they don't even sing they'll just listen to the arrangements just getting their vocals ready okay that's interesting to note and uh, talking about the all night and things which house my mass squad people <laughs> <laughs> petra let me let me come to you now and, and okay. draw which which gospel musician do you listen to and why do you listen to that person and i'm talking about vocal wise Vocal-wise, <laughs> the two people I listen to, I, I, don't, I would not really say I listen to them for their vocals. I'm sorry. I love them so much, but not for mm -hmm. the vocals. Mm -hmm. I listen to Sinatra a lot, and I listen to Victoria Orenze a lot. Okay. But with the vocal side, I just do my rehearsals and things. Oh, but, so you just do you? Yes, but I just love them, and you know they inspire me a lot. So okay. those are the two people I listen to. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's not, it's not about trying it's not, to no, learn no. what this person will do, some mm -hmm. riffs and some runs. And well, I, I pick those things for them, from okay. them, like okay. unconsciously, okay. actually. But I would not, I don't want to. Yeah, you, yeah. you won't copy, copy, right. saying that you are copying this from No, them. no, no, no. I, I am me. I'm very unique. Okay. I don't copy people. Oh, you're Petra. But, okay. <laughs> yes, I'm Petra. I don't want to be the second best of another person. Please. But I mean, I just listen to them yeah. and they inspire me. But I don't say that, I would not say that I copy them. Or, yeah. Okay, interesting. Is rhythm really important when you are singing? Very. Yeah. <laughs> very. Yeah. 
I'm asking because sometimes the rhythm you really hear, it's really some way. A lot of people have bad rhythm. Mm-hmm. That's why when you, when, when you are doing studio, that's mm-hmm. when you realize that people have bad timing. Like, if the beat is king, 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 king they, they can't get it. Mm-hmm. It's very, if you can't get that one, dear, forget, <laughs> stop singing. Yeah, and th- that one doesn't come with when you are doing the song. You see, you to, I, I'm not really good with music. I don't mm-hmm. really, but I know there's a hook, there's a first verse and the second verse. Yeah. I know that's the only thing okay. I know. Yeah, she's arranging some songs. Right? <laughs> you know it all. You know everything. I don't. Uh, no, no, really. I'm learning from you guys. And when you say the rhythm is bad, is it that it's the timing yeah. or is the arrangement that is bad? Because sometimes you listen to certain foreign songs and their hooks are so amazing. You come here or in our part of the world, I only say here, here, and the hooks are somewhere else. So is it the timing or the, the I, I arrangement? I think if the hook is different, I think it's from the producer. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the artist. The artist. The artist. Yeah. Okay. It's just the arrangement. Mental. And I mean, as, as music directors, all of you, yeah. where do you decide that you need to put this? Okay, let's arrange it this way so yeah. that this is going to be nice from this part. Maybe the intro won't do the usual that everybody does. Do this. What, what's the creative, as Anaya puts it, the creative process for an arrangement of a song. You've done arrangements for artists. I mean, the VGMA, Three mm-hmm. Music, I think you, you are doing something. How do you decide... You're doing a lot. Not yeah. How, how do you decide that you want this to, to start? Let's start with this. Let's continue. How do you do that? I think, for me, I, I, it comes from inspiration. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Sometimes the lyrics of the song can tell you that, okay, looking at the way the lyrics are, you need to uh, make it maybe cool mm-hmm. or you need to give it a fast tempo or you need to make it uh, uh, maybe a, a three four composition or a six yeah. eight composition or maybe the progressions are supposed to be soft or probably the pianos are supposed to be a little bit hard or soft or you need to go funky so actually for me that's how mine is like it comes out of inspiration okay so when you bring the lyrics some of them come with their melodies alongside mm. but of course at the end of the day you have to tweak some of the melodies because when you listen to it, you realize that nah, like pro- progressively something is missing. Mm, so you need to okay. change the progressions a little mm-hmm. bit and then put the chord here and put the chord there. So for me, it, it, it's got to do with inspiration. So the more I listen to the song, the more I could tell that, okay, I think this one will fit more for an Afrobeat mm-hmm. or this one will fit for maybe ballad or this one will fit for that. This one will fit for, this one sounds more like a Western vibe. So let's give it some black contemporary gospel feel or something. Aha. Uh-huh. So mine has got to do with that. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to the hook, a hook a hook is actually maybe a part in the song mm-hmm. that sticks immediately okay. you hear. So uh, let's say, what song can I even use as an example? Like immediately you hear the song, let's say, um, Gemetto's Bononi. I'm going to bring circular. Oh, you can bring it on. <laughs> when you hear <laughs> maybe Church and Mokobene Tamu, you let you hear it keeps yeah. ringing in your head. Over yeah. and that's the hook. Yeah. So that's the hook. So for me, with every song, at least, if not for anything at all, there should be a hook in it. Okay. Such that even if the person cannot really flow along with the verse, mm-hmm. when it gets to the hook, it can mm-hmm. get the person stuck yeah. with the song. Mm-hmm. So the person might come out from, from the concert, mm-hmm. whether from the studio, mm-hmm. wherever you guys have the recording, and when the person comes out, like unconsciously, you realize that the song is playing in the head. That's the hook. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So for me, I think when you're arranging a song, it's very important that there's a hook yeah. in the song. Yes. L- let me take you back. You mentioned um, the arrangement. Sometimes this could be Afrobeat. Does it require that we have to rearrange the song there again before you perform it? Yes, sometimes. Okay, yeah, so sometimes let's take something like um, Kukui the Traveler. Okay. I think at the three music, he performed mm-hmm. when it was raining and right, everything. Right, right. How did that whole uh, preparation or creation happen? Because at that time, it wasn't a song that was played for yeah. us. Yes. But then he performed it there. With such um, preparation, how do you go about it? So I think we started his rehearsals like um, a week into mm-hmm. the program and it met like twice or three times. Okay. So he came with the lyrics and then um, Afre mm-hmm. came with the beat, came with the, uh, the sound mm-hmm. or the music. So we thought about it and we were like, okay, there's something called relative minor. So we felt like, okay, it relative evolves. Relative what? Minor. Relative minor. Like, I, okay, okay. I don't really know how okay. to explain. So okay. it evolves around that. And it sounded more like a chant, okay. you know. 
So we wanted to give you that vibe from the intro. Yeah. But this time around, we don't want the intro to start with the instrument. Mm -hmm. Like it has to start with the vocal, some kind of wild, you know, vocals to just to give you that kind of feel. Yeah. So anybody who listens to it goes like, wow, like because yeah. you don't really expect yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it kind of like catches your attention. And yeah, then you can follow the music because mm -hmm. I believe that music is a sound yeah. and it's a way of communication. So sometimes if you don't understand how to communicate the music, it will be difficult for the, the people listening to yeah. you to, to follow. Yeah. You know, um, there are people who might not, uh, we have people that naturally, they don't buy into that genre. Mm -hmm. It's different. But yeah. people who love those genres, when they hear it, they'll be excited. But if they love those genres and you do it and it's not nice, so they can tell you, say, ah, this one, yeah. It's, on it's not nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he just had to come with the lyrics and the arrangement was done. Yes, like, sometimes, I mean, but, but then Black Sharif is actually a very good songwriter. Yeah. And he's, he, has, he has good uh, melodies as well. So sometimes they can come. Sometimes the song comes like, maybe, da, 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 da. So it comes, it doesn't come at once there. Mm -hmm. Probably we go and sleep on it. That the next time, maybe the verse will come. Oh, yeah. And I think you were asking, how do we arrange songs? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Wait. then we'll come to the hook side right the hook i say i want to say it before i forget <laughs> okay can you make it anyhow you want it because you want it to stick you don't really need to go by the book like how everything has to be because it's the hook you have to just make it anyhow and um, if you want a hook to stick mm -hmm. it needs to be simple mm -hmm. and the progression has to be commercial okay very okay. commercial okay. there are some okay. progressions that all uh, let me say there are some melodies that are very commercial mm -hmm. that anybody can relate to but if it's very complicated yeah pff, people like will lose it i asked for the who because one of the guys who really do well with hooks is the links boys right, kitty for example right. yeah their links always stick I got to you yeah. yeah. right, right. that's exactly. a hook it's Look, simple okay or, no, oh, the say hook. cheese is the that hook. One, the say cheese is the hook. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let me come Wait, in there. The cool. say cheese is the, is the, is the chorus. I, uh -huh. the hook. I mean, the chorus. So I, mean, I, it's the I hook. beg your pardon. Yeah. That is the verse. It's the verse. Yes. So which one is the hook? <laughs> there was no hook in that particular song. Okay. Yes. So, then let's, before we go But, <laughs> you see, sometimes some choruses can serve as a hook. Mm -hmm. okay. As far as it is sticking in your head okay. and it's ringing. Okay. Uh, syn synonym, I can't say synonymously. <laughs> synonymously. Right. Synonymously. It's stemmed as a, yes. a hook. A hook. Okay. Yes. So, so in that particular Nana, song, Nana, we, we because you know, I know, we need to go for you know, break. then those who <laughs> put the lyrics out right. there on, on like. Oh, some of them don't really know about it. They don't know. They because don't sometimes really they will be the ones who are really They're like, hook, first verse, second right. verse. Second verse, right. verse, right. verse, right. verse, right. verse right. and coaches like that. You're still watching entertainment review here, and today we're talking vocals, and it's been an exciting one. We're taking a break. When we come back, Naya will be telling us how, why the contemporary people always like the. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll be back shortly <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Okay, welcome back from the break. So, entertainment review here. Uh, I'm Desiree in the star. We're here with Nanaya Tanobache and our guest TMC, Naya Pari, and Petra Odubayo. We're talking vocals. And before the break, I, I, I told Naya that when we come back, he's going to answer this. Good vocals in recent times has been attributed to contemporary music. Now, some people think that y'all overdo it. You always want to do like a simple song. You want to do... Like you want to do those kind of things. What is the, the thought into that? You know, when you know, if you do simple like this, but you add some curves and some things to it. That question is only TMC that can answer. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that but question, is it with just, the live performance or the recording? No, even with the recording, okay. whichever way. I mean, okay. most of it, most of it's recording. Yeah. And now in gospel, really, um, <laughs> most of the older folks do not relate mm -hmm. with the songs of most of them, I should say, do not relate with, with the songs that are because Obeka Day, like, why are teaching too much? They are doing this too much. You work in the studio with some of. Hmm. I say it's TMC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, you well, give well, us why? your thoughts. You give, give, give us your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I personally, mm -hmm. I don't like a lot of. Um, Chiches. Chiches. Yeah. Especially when you are doing. A production, okay. Like okay. when you are producing a song, like you are going to bring it out. Like, mm -hmm. is it friends you are doing a cover, mm -hmm. or it's just normal administration mm -hmm. or a program or event? 
but for production's sake, it, when you're when you're producing a song, you need that like this. We have structures. You you ask the question about bringing out a song. So professionally, you need a producer, you need a music director, you need a band leader, and you need a vocal director. So before the song comes out, the producer will say, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. Take this out, take this out, take this out. No, before the music director finishes the music, the producer has the final say. You say, no, this is too much, reduce this, bring this, bring that, bring that, bring that. So when you're producing a song, it's a different ball game together. But the life, no dear. The, the, the person is singing. Okay. You can't go and... <laughs> On stage, hey, you are doing too much, or what the person will do is what you It's a do. performance. Yes. So the teachers is needed. <laughs> but but Some, also sometimes, but sometimes the teachers can really distract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you have to know your content. Is it worship? Are okay. you doing? If you are doing worship, you have to know that you have to, you are leading people. So you don't have to lead people in a lot of churches to distract them. Mm-hmm. And there's ministration. There's ministration and maybe there's song ministration that mm-hmm. you, you want to just show off your vocals, yeah, which is okay. fine. But, but in, in worship, I think you should stick maintain it. Down stick down to it. Yes. Yeah. Stick to it. I think. TMZ. <laughs> That's right. But you just answered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but you sing a lot. Yes. And you, I must say, you, you have those nice riffs and runs. When, when do you decide? He's Ghana's best riffer. Well, <laughs> arguably. But when do you decide you want to do this? Or you're not going to do it? He's How? always doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, it, is, so, it is it like the Mariah so, Carey um, sort of? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The one that, like those, those oh, he'll give an example. Okay. Tell me, I trust you. So, uh, the thing about riffs and runs is that... Um, it makes music beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and wait, yeah. I'm coming. Some people know how to do it, and some people don't know how to do exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, okay. So those who don't know how to do it, so when they do it, you know... <laughs> it's like you wish they didn't even do it at all. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Yes. So uh, it makes it beautiful. And you see, Riffs and Rants is actually coming from a certain style of music, okay. which is the black. Okay. You know, so they, they are, uh, how do I even put it? They are very musically inclined, not... Not as if the white hours or not, but they are used to be to being a little bit adventurous, you know. And the riffs and runs actually is a, they are concepts that are taken from the piano or the instruments, okay. You know, so mostly they, they do the runs or they do the riffings or the licks during spaces in music. I, I, I can't really explain that much here. So, mostly, let's say, for example, maybe if you are singing a song like. Maybe Dana say Dana. He's singing for us. No, Dana. Dana say. I can see it. Now the 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 point between the the time you ended the phrase to the next time you are coming back to Dana say, there can be something about that just to color the song. So probably someone might choose to do, uh, to say, or someone might also try to do. <laughs> put it there as Dana say. You get it. Mm. So, but. <laughs> I think growing up, I used to be someone who really didn't understand when to apply the riffs okay. and when to apply the runs. So if you watch most of my very, 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 very old videos, you realize that immediately I start, I make sure that Alpha and Omega. <laughs> Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. Riffs or Heavy Sway Chapel. Hey, like, I, run for I have the to Lord. start from the top to the down. I need to run for the Lord. Do you understand? <laughs> but when I grew up and I started appreciating music, I realized that actually the more you do that, the more it makes the song cumbersome. Mm-hmm, and true. it's not really appealing to the ear. Mm. But you just pause a little bit. Once in a while, just when the people are not expecting, you just drop some nice riff or some nice rants or maybe what others also term as melisma. It actually makes it beautiful. The thing about um, the older generation not... Um, you, you said something about... Yeah, most of them are really, you know, seeing exactly. the need for that. It's, uh, for me, personally, I think it has got to, to do with uh, the, the evolution of music. Okay. You know, if I want to be honest, most of the older generation, I don't like their songs. Hey, that is the truth. Do you understand? Yes, but 
some of their music to I love it. Okay. Do you get it? So it's relative. It's a relative. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It's very relative. <laughs> we've got we've got a few <laughs> minutes to run up. All too soon. The one hour is uh Petra, let's just talk about you and then I came to you now. Any advice you got for um artists? Your uh we played uh, your song Leah. Uh, yeah, he's uh, God. Yes, he's God. Yeah, his God a... is my maiden single. Okay. And it was released on the seventh of August this year. Um and it's available on all the digital music digital platforms. Okay. Petra Dubai, he's God. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's that's her, her maiden single. Make sure that yep. you go run it up and uh, enjoy it. And uh, Nayao, you're a producer, vocal director, music, everything. Your advice to artists, especially gospel artists. Invest in your music. When I say invest in your music, invest in in your team. Your B, uh, uh, BVGs, your band, those who are going to make the music, have a budget for them. <laughs> <laughs> and pay. Oh, Tra trust me. I didn't pay. Oh. <laughs> you do free. <laughs> no. Or relationship. Oh. Uh, well. <laughs> yeah. What song did you, what song, what song did you uh, help with on, on the SOJ? Uh, Adam. Oh, yeah, the gospel one. Yeah, that's, that was a nice one. Thank you very nice much. One. Yeah. TMC, how's, uh, <laughs> how's your mother doing? Empress Gifty. She's uh, good. She's good, I eh? Okay. <laughs> now, with you as a musician, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, so uh, I have a couple of music coming out mm -hmm. that I'm personally. working on. Yes, personally. Wow. Okay. That I'm working on. Now, you have to be careful. <laughs> you didn't do the singing for us. Oh, hmm. next time when I come. Hmm. Yes, so watch out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We've loved every bit of this Thank conversation. And uh, yeah, we hope that everybody that watched has learned something uh, from this one. Let me say big shout out to my guys, Ruben. <laughs> Ruben, yeah, Ruben, uh, Ruben, my show as we worry me. Big shout out to you and the whole team. So that's it for the show. My name is Desmond Krekudan. So you can call me Desifane the Star Boy. And today, with this kind of vocals, let's work on our vocals so we can mm. listen and hear some good okay, sounds. Music. My <laughs> name is Nanaya Tanobach. Up next is me. Enjoy the rest of our programs. We'll see you soon. Bye.